That would be an understatement to say that the uh, Premier is under pressure. It was pretty well inevitable that uh, given their involvement, the two ministers who have now resigned as well as uh, Adam Solmurek, that they should go. Only a, only a matter of time before that happened. Uh, the question I think is this, uh, can the Labor Party cauterise this uh, terrible uh, set of affairs for them uh, quickly? And if they can, then perhaps uh, the Labor Party, both uh, Daniel Andrews and Anthony Albanese, will be able to move on. But uh, don't forget this, there are still uh, Adam Somurek's allies if not him, his um, organisation, his faction, if you want to put it that way, is headless. But there will be people who are out uh, to get at both Daniel Andrews and Anthony Albanese over this. Whatever they can do to try to drag them into the affair, uh, into the murky business that Adam Songerick was, uh, was involved in, uh, they will now attempt to do. Whether they're successful is another matter. Interesting, though, to go back... Uh, uh, into history, uh, 20 or so years ago, Peter Beattie in Queensland faced a similar set of circumstances about branch stacking and so on and so forth. He called out the individuals who were involved and as only Peter Beattie can do, appealed for public information about this and then went on to win the next election. Uh, Daniel Andrews has a very healthy majority uh, in Victoria uh, and uh, you would think at the moment, unless this really drags on and he gets dragged into the details of what's gone on uh, that he, uh, he should survive. The other immediate question for uh, Anthony Albanese, of course, is what this means for the Eden Monero by-election next month. Uh, these are events that are south of the Murray, but they are a reminder to New South Wales voters and those in Eden Monero of the kinds of things that were bedeviled the New South Wales Labor Party for so long, surrounding Eddie Abid and others. And also, Ash, I would say, uh, amplifies the general cynicism of voters about the political class and that is clearly a danger for uh, the Labor Party, Anthony Albanese in the immediate term and the Ed Monero by-election. Well, absolutely, Jim. And when you get the national executive involved, which looks like what will happen here, it can get messy when you do you have the Victorians or, or any uh, state party for that matter, when they end up butting heads with the national executive, it can get a bit messy. It can indeed. One of the things I'm quite intrigued about, and I think John Ferguson was writing about this in The Australian this morning and saying that uh, Labor sources were telling him that it was fairly common knowledge around the Labor Party that it, there was a probe, a journalist probe, 60 Minutes it turned out to be, into Adam Somurek, and yet both Anthony Albanese and Daniel Andrews have insisted that the first they knew about it was on Sunday night, virtually as the 60 Minutes program and the material in the age was made public. Now, if that is the case, then clearly they are in the clear, but the problems that follow for them, uh, should there be any dirt or smell attached, that will be very difficult indeed. The other thing, as you mentioned, with national executive involved of the Labor Party, what do they do about the Victorian branch? What about some of those members of parliament who are in seats now because uh, they were uh, you know, patronage of, uh, of, of Adam Semurak? Uh, there's also the, the question of the factional rearrangement that will occur as a consequence of the decline the demise of, uh, of Adam Semirak, and that will be messy, could still be messy. Who gets on top? Does the right in, Vic in Victoria start to reassert itself? What happens to the remnants of the left uh, that clung to Adam Semirak? There's a bit of get square with Daniel Andrews and also uh, with Bill Shorten uh, back in the day. So these are still things to be resolved and could create difficulties over the medium term, I would suggest, for the Labor Party, particularly in Victoria, but nationally as well. Jim, I'm also keen for your thoughts on international affairs. We've seen China this week announcing the death penalty for an Australian on drug charges. As we know, though, he's been in jail there for several years now. Are we really meant to believe the timing of that announcement is just a coincidence, considering it does come at a time when Australia's relationship with Beijing is so tense? Look, it's a bit hard to tell, I would say, but certainly you would have to say, Ash, that 
the parlous state of diplomatic relations between Australia and China at the moment do not help his case. I do notice that some legal experts, Don Rothwell from the ANU and international uh, legal experts suggesting that this was the outer edge of time for the Chinese legal processes to uh, take their course. Uh, so you wonder whether it's actually related to current events or whether it's something else that's, uh, that's going on. The best that you can say for poor Carl Gillespie is this, that it does appear he has the opportunity to appeal. That will give him probably six months or a year before the final verdicts of the Chinese higher courts are brought down. And you can hope that the ability of the Australian Embassy in China uh, to perform its consular duties effectively uh, will bear out in such a way that he doesn't pay uh, the ultimate price. Australia opposed to the death penalty. China knows that. Australia has also learned from the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the case in Indonesia uh, earlier on in that maybe public diplomacy may not work, but it's a very, very difficult predicament for uh, Gillespie and his family at this particular time and made more difficult by the fact that diplomatic relations between Australia and China are at the worst that I've seen them in a very, very long time.